Coming up, Sony announces the PlayStation Classic. Hopes you will send them your wallet coming December. Google makes some changes to YouTube gaming to homogenize it with plain old YouTube. RuneScape old school moderator finds themselves in trouble. And Valve has announced that they will begin, they will expand their moderation capabilities to game communities. And early access game Scum has found quite the early access success as it is uh, the new the new kid in town as far as Battle Royales are concerned. This and more for your dot plan of September 23rd, 2018. So starting off here with Telltale Games, they announced in a surprise, uh, I think to most people, that they are closing up shop uh, immediately. Uh, over quite nearly 400 people um, have lost their job, several hundred, uh, it's not quite 400. 400 was the maximum amount that they were at uh, last year, uh, but they have gone through a layoff previously where they laid off 90 people in November of 2017. Now they are closing down to just 25. Uh, those 25 people are working on a uh, whatever obligations are remaining to the board of directors and to the partners of Telltale Games. Um, they have not announced yet exactly what those um, people are working on, but there was a tweet released with uh, from Telltale Games, uh, sort of explaining the situation a little bit, um, saying that it was, quote, uh, it was, it's been an incredibly difficult year for Telltale as we worked to set the company on a new course. Unfortunately, we ran out of time trying to get there, we released some of our best content this year and received a tremendous amount of positive feedback, but ultimately that did not translate to sales. With a heavy heart, we watch our friends leave today to spread our brand of storytelling across the games industry. Interesting stuff here. Um, don't know the last couple games that uh, Telltale have released, uh, you know, the, the Walking Dead, um, Batman, uh, Minecraft Story Mode, Guardians of the Galaxy, Game of Thrones, Tales from the Borderlands. They are all of mixed, um, I thought they were, most of them were pretty good, but uh, apparently uh, not a lot of people uh, purchased those. And uh, if I look at, say, Steam Spy, for instance, for some of those games, uh, we see that in fact, the, the Walking Dead was their breakout success. About two to five million owners, uh, on average, for have uh, Walking Dead. Uh, Wolf Among Us being in second there with one to two million. And again, these numbers are just estimates based on what's going on. Um, and then it takes a little bit, but you get down to Tales from the Borderlands, one that I really enjoyed, which is 500,000 to a million uh, copies were sold or at least uh, at least validated on Steam. So, uh, and then Game of Thrones right behind it with 500 to a million. Then it gets kind of, you know, those were, those were several years ago, um, which is why I, I can't, I don't know why they never did a second season of Tales from the Borderlands because that would have been fantastic. But these were several years ago, I think 2014, 2015 is when these games were going on. And then if you move forward a little bit further, you see Batman the Enemy Within, which was the latest Batman game that they did. Uh, only 200 to 500,000 copies sold. Um, Minecraft Story Mode, the first one first season was only 200 to 500,000 and that was actually only a 41% approval on that because a lot of people just didn't know that it was a a point and click and not an actual you know a Minecraft a sandbox game and then uh, you get into even more depressing stuff here the original Batman game that they did which I played and I really enjoyed only did 200 to 500,000 copies Walking Dead, my my con or my chone, I don't know how you pronounce that, but that is the expansion to Walking Dead. That didn't do very good. You can see uh, a new frontier, another expansion to Walking Dead didn't do very good. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy, which is one, of, which is I think the latest one that they did, um, besides the Walking Dead final season, 
uh, it was only 100 to 200,000 copies, and the second season of Minecraft Story Mode, even the worst on the list, all the way down the bottom at 50,000 to 100,000 uh, sales. There's no word yet on what exactly they're going to do with The Walking Dead. They were in the middle of the final season of it, and... I believe there was one episode out. There's a second one, I think, on the 25th is the second episode. But then there's no word on what the third and fourth episode would be or if they will even exist. Um, there's there's rumors that the rest of The Walking Dead final season has been canceled. Um, I can't substantiate any of those. There's also rumors that... No, they're going to work on that. The 25 people who are left are going to work on that and nothing else. There's also rumors that there's going to be um, those 25 people are just working on something for Netflix. Uh, the uh, Telltale Games had had a partnership, announced a partnership with Netflix, I believe last year, uh, where they were going to release Minecraft Story Mode to Netflix subscribers as well as other games. They were also looking to um, develop a game based on the Stranger Things uh, franchise, which is uh, IP, which is what Netflix owns. Uh, all those seem to be in peril, except for the Minecraft Story Mode thing. That's There's a rumor that that's the, what the 25 people are working on. The other thing um, that we're not quite sure about yet is that uh, Telltale was also a publisher and mostly of console games. And two in particular, Seven Days to Die and Stranded Deep, both are PC releases and the developers for those games are working and continuing to work on the PC releases of those. But Telltale had taken on the console releases of those games and we're not sure yet there has been hasn't been any word yet as to whether or not those will uh, continue to be supported by telltale or if those devs will have to find another publishing partner um, to, to to handle those for the console releases uh, my guess and this is a complete off the wall guess is that um, if they if we were to interpret what they say as you know straight through uh, that they're just working on their obligations to partners. I would imagine that those uh, 25 people are probably also working on the console release things for Seven Days of Dying Strand. I would imagine. This total, total off the wall. I have no substantiation, no way to substantiate this. This is just my opinion. Um, because to me, that would seem like if you're just going to have 25 people around to fulfill an obligation, that's, uh, that's quite a bit for just fulfilling whatever Netflix wants, I would imagine, unless they're building a whole website for Netflix f to do this or whatever. Um, so I would imagine there's going to be like a little bit left to do for Seven Days of Die and Strand Deep, but I don't know what kind of uh, what kind of contract they had and, and and whether or not that's part of the deal or not, or if they are considered partners or or not. No idea. Uh, they, we will find out in the coming weeks as to what the fates are of those. I can tell you that um, the Strand Deep devs have come out and said that that's not going to affect their PC release at all. And I can't see this affecting Seven Days to Die's PC release either. So if you have those games on PC, you're probably uh, fine and good. Um, but if you were waiting for them on console, we don't know yet. We don't know what's what's happening with any of that stuff. This, uh, this all happened so quickly and on a Friday that uh, no one's had a chance really to to figure out what's going on and what isn't going on. Um, if you're wondering, how did this happen? How did this go so quickly? Um, there was a, a good article. Uh, and I, I've shown you some, obviously some numbers from uh, Steam Spy there, but uh, there's a good article in Variety that I, I will have linked down in the description. Uh, that actually goes into both the Netflix Stranger Things deal and the Netflix deal in general with, with uh, Telltale Games and also a bunch of the problems that Telltale has been going through. Apparently, um, there have been tons and tons of engine uh, problems. Their engine is is ancient. They keep using the same engine for most of their games and it's they've upgraded along the way, but it's, uh, it's a patchwork job. There's a lot of performance issues. I know that I saw performance issues, random ones in, in the Batman game. 
um, and several others. And apparently it's, they were spending Boku amounts of time trying to keep, trying to cut and paste and duct tape the engine together to keep it, to keep it functioning. Um, and instead of, you know, getting a new engine or just using unity or something like that. And, uh, amongst other things, uh, other, other internal strife, uh, I, Again, I would I would read up the on the Variety article. It seemed to go into pretty good depth about it. Sony has announced the PlayStation Classic for uh, all of our consumption here, and it is uh, in in the same vein as the SNES Classic and the NES Classic. Um, so it's uh, we're going down the same same path there. It looks like it's just a basically a retro pie pretty much <laughs> it's probably just a pie in there with uh, a usb uh controller uh good old you know ps1 controller and um usb power and stuff there is no uh there's been no power block actually uh announced it's it's usb but no actual uh Thing to plug it into which then you can then plug into the wall uh, uh you know an adapter outlet uh so that's kind of weird because the nes and snes had it at least the american versions of the of those had it so i'm i'm surprised that sony has not said that that is a thing for uh the playstation classic as well so you'll have to Find your own adapter either on Amazon or just uh, get one of these USB hubs to plug it into and get so it can get some power. You can see the cable there and everything else. It looks like it's a fairly lengthy cable anyway, at least from the picture, but it's hard to tell. <laughs> There's only it's only a couple couple loops there, um, so I can't tell for sure if that's where uh, if that's going to be sufficient for what we're trying to do. It, it does look like though the controllers seem to have very short uh, USBs on them so I don't know I don't know how well it's gonna it's gonna work out um, is, is it gonna be like the NES where it was you had to be really close to it or will it have a little bit more room a little bit more wiggle room to to work with there not not sure not sure at all but we do know that there's gonna be at least 20 games for it and it is up for pre-orders now. Uh, you can get it for 100 bucks. I believe the two uh, places, 100 bucks US anyway. I think it's 130 dollars elsewhere. Um, it's uh, the two places that I know of right now, at least in North America, that have it are, or at least in America, I should say, that have it are um, GameStop and. Walmart you can do your pre-orders from I don't know if you can pre-order it from there was a pre-order button on the Sony site But I don't know where that actually leads you to if, if it's if you can order it from them or not um, And we don't know what all the games are yet uh, They've only announced uh, Final Fantasy 7 uh, Jumping Flash Ridge Racer Type 4 Tekken 3 and Wild Arms as the games that have been officially announced We know that they that there's gonna be 20 games that is only three, four, five. So it's going to be 15 more left to find out, find out about. So I'm sure a lot of people are just going to kind of wait until, wait and see until they announce the rest of them to see if it's going to be worth it or not, especially at a hundred bucks. It can be a little bit, it's getting a little bit pricey there, I'd say, but you know, this is Sony and money is something that they enjoy probably more than anybody else. <laughs> They like to get as much out, out of people as they can. And I guess they're also looking at the market trends and going, well, look at all how many people clamored over these other things. So let's 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 uh, follow up Nintendo on that one. That seems to be their their modus operandi anymore. Is let's follow Nintendo. <laughs> Nintendo had a had a uh, uh, a Wii U uh, a, a Wii controller that uh, Wii motes that you can swing around and do things. All right, well we'll get a, a, a what was that the ball thing that you can swing around <laughs> the controllers with the, with the ball on them that you can swing around the playstation move or whatever it was so yeah they are they are nothing if not uh, followers uh when it comes to at least nintendo anyway fanboys if you will <laughs> so that that my friends is my take on the playstation classic google has <laughs> 
I'm doing it live, friends. I'm doing it live. Google has announced that the YouTube gaming app is going to be sunset very soon, the mobile app anyway, and they are combining all the YouTube gaming stuff back into YouTube proper, which honestly is the way it should have freaking been in the first freaking place. But, you know, Google is nothing if not loving the fact that they can get people hooked on stuff and then snatch it away from them. They do it all the freaking time. Um, and it's uh, it's interesting. You can see the, a video there of what it looks like. You go to, basically, instead of going to gaming.youtube.com, which I think still works, um, you could go to youtube.com slash gaming now and see what it looks like fully integrated with the YouTubes. You can see the top live games. You can see uh, subscriptions, uh, gaming subs videos from your subscriptions. And then you've got the gaming creator on the rise, which is something new they've done. Uh, there's some criteria for it that's not quite known as to whether or not, uh, as to how, who gets the gaming creator on the rise. Apparently it's, I think, every week or something like that, somebody gets that. Um, so that's interesting. Another another way of sort of showing, uh, showcasing the community and whatnot. And then of course you got a section full of live streams that are currently on. Um, so you can pop into those as well, uh, and it's uh, yeah, it's it's basically what it freaking should have been in the first place. Probably, um, not sure why they wanted to do a whole another site and then didn't really put the effort into it. Um, I think they just realized that hey, we got this we got this mobile app hanging around that we don't really feel like uh, maintaining anymore. So let's just get rid of it and do it the way we should have done it in the first place. So who knows, who knows, but uh, there you have it, friends. That is YouTube gaming. And then uh, RuneScape old school. I'm, I'm forgetting how I even had this thing set up. RuneScape old school. A, a moderator has found themselves in a bit of trouble there. Um, and players have found that uh, have been complaining recently that they've been subject of a good old school robbery, uh, banditry, as it were, uh, finding some of their wealth and other items uh, no longer in their own possession. And after an internal investigation, it looks like a moderator for the RuneScape old school um, game, or fork as it is, was, uh, you know, procuring things for themselves. Um, as it says here, following our, uh, do, during our rigorous routine system checks, irregular activity was identified on a small number of accounts, including the movement of wealth and items back into the live game. Um, so basically that's from what's for what we're gathering is that one of the, one of the J mods, um, was stealing from the players and they have been terminated for that, uh, for that problem, for that for those actions. Um, they've said that, uh, they've come out in the statement and said that the moderator did not have any access to players' credit cards or anything of that nature or bank accounts because they use a third-party payment processor to, that handles all that. So you don't have to necessarily worry about your credit card numbers and stuff having been stolen. Um, for those of you wondering, what is RuneScape Old School? It is a fork of the runescape game the main trunk runescape game um it started a couple years ago i think 2013 maybe because the community had become disillusioned uh with the direction of the main runescape game and they petitioned jagex who are the maintainers and creators of of runescape um to you know roll back some of these weird changes and bring back uh, the old community and uh, Jagex apparently found a archive copy of a version of the game from uh, RuneScape from 2007. They've since forked that off. They've made uh, additions and modifications and changes to that, mostly just to the engine. Um, and any other changes they want to make to it, they get a vote from the player base and they have to get, I believe, a 75% uh, positive vote before they will make the, the, put the changes into place. And so you essentially have Jagex, who owns RuneScape and owns the IP and everything else. They're maintaining two versions of the game, the main 
trunk version of the game and this fork of the game. Uh, there's a rumor uh, that the fork of the game, the old school, RuneScape old school as it's called, uh, actually has doubled the number of players uh, of the main game, or at least at one time had doubled the number of players in the main game. And it seems like even in this um, announcement here that uh, the maintainers at Jagex uh, have seen that RuneScape old school has quite more of a passionate following community than than their main community so uh this is a, a bit of a, a bit of a black mark on them uh that this what this moderator did but it looks like they've done the the right things and uh have set everything right they um normally don't return uh items and stuff uh to the players that have been uh stolen like this but in this case uh, I guess the the evidence was so overwhelming that they they went and restored everything that they could back to all the players who had been affected by this. So it seems like everything is uh, continuing on properly there. We go to Valve has announced that they are going to be a little bit more active in moderating flagged posts on game community discussions. And there's a lot of. Uh, you know, I've seen some articles out there that said that, uh, oh, you know, uh, you know, Valve is, is finally going to moderate their forums and all that stuff, and it's yeah, not quite. Uh, I'd say, I'd say at best, this is a uh, a cold front moving through hell, not a <laughs> not a full blown ice age, um, as it were, because I, I after reading this uh, posts. Um, there's a few things that I've I've picked out I've I've kind of latched onto that seem um, like Valve being Valve, kind of just washing their hands of a lot of things, just never quite being committal to what they're trying to do, just doing it half-assed. Um, what they're saying here is, starting on Tuesday, when a discussion thread or post in your community is reported by a player. We'll be added to a queue for a moderation team to review. We'll look at these reported posts along with all the other reported content we're currently reviewing and remove anything that violates our community guidelines. So this is really not necessarily moderation. This is more, uh, we are going to take a look at anything the community has flagged and then see if it has violated our community rules. Um, they've also helpfully here had some links to uh, some of the uh, documentation, the Steamworks documentation, uh, particularly around deleting threads and posts and all that stuff. But there was one thing I wanted to point out uh, that might not have jumped out in if you've read an article on this elsewhere, and that is there's a section in their, in their announcement here where it says, how can I opt out? And it says, if you already have your own moderation staff or want complete control over the reported content in your hub, you can opt out of this service by visiting the Steamworks settings for your game. And there is a new button there that says opt out. Now, what that means is basically, even though Valve is sort of being praised for, oh, they're gonna do some more moderation and stuff here. Oh, this is, this is good. Really not, because it's really, they're, they're still like, uh, you know, they're still giving you the option to just kind of, giving the developers an option to just kind of opt out of it. Um, which means that if you have a particularly ornery developer, let's say, that's uh, being uh, a little bit nasty to their customers, they're still not really gonna do much about that. You know, if, they, if there's flagged things there, or if the, the game that you're, the hub that you're working in is has opted out of it, so yeah, I, I I think this is this is while it's a good step, it's still Valve kind of being like, yeah, we'll we'll kind of half-ass this. Why not? <laughs> it doesn't hurt us to half-ass this, so we'll half-ass it a little bit more. Um, and then if you look at the link that they provide it to the moderation tools and what that looks like um, for the Steam here. I found some interesting things in this. Um, they, you know, I, on the one hand, while I'm still like, ah, oh, what does this mean about developers who are pretty bad with their community and deleting posts and all that stuff, what does that do? It really doesn't do anything, but if you look at the, if you look at the moderation tools here, there's a couple things that are kind of jumped out at me. First of all is the editing posts. 
You should rarely need to edit a post from a player, however, it may be useful to remove personal information or fix a broken link. Editing may also be appropriate in cases where a post contains valid points and deleting the post is not desirable, which I did not know that um, moderators could edit posts from other people. Uh, I mean, I, I get that it, it would be good to keep it from, you know, keep personal information out of there and stuff, but exactly what does that look like? Because... <laughs> Because it would be, can they edit it to the point where it's it? You say something completely different from what you actually said. I, I have no idea exactly where that where that ends. I, that was a weird thing that I saw. Like I, I can't think of any other of any other community that lets you that lets a moderator actually edit a, a posting instead of just block it and then give a reason why they blocked it. And then on deleting threads and posts, deleting content sends a powerful message to users and should be reserved for highly offensive content or things like phishing attempts. It should only be done when something is clearly in violation of the Steam community rules and guidelines. Do not use the delete feature to hide negative reviews or criticism of the game. Doing so will quickly turn your forum into a place to discuss moderator actions instead of the game itself. Users have a right to express their discontent with the game or its features. If there are multiple negative threads pertaining to the same issue, you are encouraged to merge them together. The wording on this is interesting. Um, while I appreciate that Valve is kind of telling people, like, don't delete negative comments, they're not really saying we're going to do anything to you if you do. <laughs> it's just like, it's really kind of in your best interest not to do this, which is just like a wishy-washy thing. It's like, just tell tell your Steamworks developers, don't do this or you will lose your privileges. <laughs> it's kind of what I what I wish that this said. Um, it's it's valve just being very wishy-washy um and I, it's interesting because i've never read this before since i never had a need to actually read through the steamworks documentation but since they provide a link to it in that blog post i thought yeah let's take a look at it and uh yeah it's uh it's weird i, I know this is nothing new to the platform i i imagine the editing and deleting threads thing has been there forever and ever um but it's just now it's kind of shining a light a little bit brighter light on it in in my eyes and I'm like, hmm, this is this seems a bit weird and, and strange. So for all the praise that, that Valve might be getting for having this, oh, they're now moderating things. Oh my god, this is great. It's not really. They're not they're not really they, they did the minimum amount that they could possibly do to get an attaboy, I think. <laughs> In this particular case, I think that's exactly what happened. Um, so there's still a lot of don't don't think that this will somehow discourage bad uh, developers from being uh, being ornery <laughs> on, on, on the Steam forums when you say something that they don't quite agree with. Um, but there you go. Um, I That's all I'm going to say on that. I don't want to get too too deep into that. But in, in other words, let's move on to something a little bit, a little bit happier. Scum is in early access. It's an early access battle royale game, and it is um, doing quite well. They've announced that they have uh, made one million sales or surpassed one million sales in their early access. Uh, so lots of people are enjoying what they're seeing with it. Um, I guess you know. I, I guess they had the effect of it's been a while since another battle royale that's halfway decent has come out, and so. They're kind of getting the people who are tired of Fortnite and, and PUBG, maybe, or at least the ones that are tired of PUBG are coming coming along and saying, hey, here's something new and it's a little bit better. So um, kudos to them on that. They've also uh, announced that they have banned 5,000 cheaters uh, so far. So it's uh, they're, they're some of them with hardware bans. So it's it's. If you've, if you've experienced some of the cheating in the game, and, and I've heard a few who have, uh, perhaps it has gotten a little bit better now with some of these some of these bans coming being uh, handed down. I also met, forgot to mention that uh, because to celebrate having 1 million sales, they're giving all players on September 25th a gold-plated D-Eagle 50, which I assume is a Desert Eagle, but I guess they can't use the full word because <laughs> it's, it's trademarked. So... Uh, there you go. We'll all be having some bling uh, to show off for our uh, loyalty to the scum devs in the community. Um, so, so far, so good on all of that. And congratulations to them for the one million, the one million sales. What's the matter with this thing? What's all that churning and bubbling? You call that a radar screen? No, sir. We call it 
Mr. Coffee, care for some? Yes! I always have coffee when I watch Radar. You know that. Of course I do, sir. Everybody knows that. Of course we do, sir! Now that I have my coffee, I'm ready to watch Radar. Where is it? Right here, sir. Yes, friends, uh, we're on to the gaming radar. Taking a look at our gaming radar to see where uh, we land here. This is all the games uh, with announcements that have coming out um, sometime or brand new announcements for, for games. So we're going to start off with Sunless Skies. Sunless Skies. <laughs> right there on your screen. Um, Sunless Skies has announced... That they are getting a release date of January the 31st, 2019. They will be fully released then. And they have also released a pen and paper RPG in their fall in London universe called Skyfair. Where you can go get a digital download of that. I'll leave a link down in the description to where you can find a digital download of that on tabletopgaming.co.uk. But... Uh, uh, congrats to them, Sun the Skies, if you've been waiting for it. Uh, if you want it on your radar, it's 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 now uh, getting a little bit closer. You'll have to wait till you know you'll have to wait till the end of January to get it, but uh, it'll be it'll be worth the wait. It is set in this whole fall in London universe. Um, Sunless Ski, uh, Sunless Sea was uh, the f first uh, game uh, in this series, at least on at least on Steam. Anyway, there are other other uh, versions of it that were I think web based. Um, and uh, that was based on a, you were underground in a cave, uh, sailing on the seas. Uh, there's, there's a lot of horror. It's sort of like a um, Cthulhu-esque horror and, and, and all that stuff. Uh, you're always managing the horror of your crew. The more you go out, the more horrors you find. And uh, you have to kind of manage their morale that way. Um, and there's a whole bunch of stories on cover, a lot of point clicks, uh, you know, dialogue choices and, and things like that and sunless sea uh sunless skies uh is the sequel i guess to that uh that takes place in space so we're in space still got the same kind of um you know madness going on and and lots of exploration and lots of uh dialogue management and storytelling so it's a it's an interesting and uh kind of rich uh um universe so if you're if you're interested in that uh you should go take a look at it and see uh see what's going on and see if you see if you like what you see the dead cells devs uh have announced that they will be working on an update uh pretty soon uh the update should be coming out uh in late october early november it's going to be a big uh, bug fix uh, balance uh, bug, uh, balancing patch, along with some bug fixing, uh, some better mod support, and a new thing called a custom mode, which uh, is uh, designed to give you the uh, a different, uh, a new layer of control over the game. Um, so you'll be able to, for instance, ban some some weapons from the loot table. Uh, once you unlock them or choose your starting gear and a bunch of other modifications it's basically playing the game in a, in a modded sort of um under modded conditions if you want to change the difficulty uh, of of it and uh, do your own runs that way so that sounds fa sounds fantastic to me and also um after they are finished with that update they say they'll be working on the first dlc of the game which will be free uh, have brand new content, a brand new area uh, you can go and explore and uh, um, I assume more weapons and, and stuff like that. Uh, and then after that, they're not quite sure. They're asking the community for guidance as to where to go um, with the next one. Should they, they're thinking maybe the next DLC after this first one uh, will be a paid DLC and then they want to see what, uh, what the community is looking for, what the community wants and whatnot. So I want to Follow their uh, follow their threads over on Steam and uh, see what uh, see what you're in the mood for as far as uh, your Dead Cells play playing is concerned. So uh, good luck to them, I say, and we'll keep an eye on them and and I'll let you know when that patch actually uh, and new DLC and everything actually comes out. So 
there is there is that next up is helium rain helium rain it is uh they've just announced the helium rain devs have just announced that they will be coming out of early access on october the 11th they've spent uh, 13 months uh, in early access. Um, I played it probably about 13 months ago. That's the footage you're seeing here. Um, and, uh, it's pretty good. It's a, it's a sci-fi, um, with, uh, sci-fi space, um, sim. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm hesitating because it's, uh, there's a lot of logistical stuff in here. It's more like a management sim. Um, even though you do fly around in space in a spaceship and all that stuff, you do a lot of management. You're managing, uh, your own company, you're managing, uh, supply lines, um, you're contributing technology and whatnot and resources to other, uh, stations to try to build them up. There's factions in the game that you, they're all vying for power. Um, there is combat, which I never really got into, um, because it, it takes a while to get in there. Um, and mostly a lot of just trading. You're, you're, you're basically a, a space, um, a long haul trucker in, in many, in many respects of the term, um, as you're going around there taking missions and moving, uh, goods around. You can have AI that will actually do some trading for you. Uh, you can send them on trade routes and all that stuff. Uh, you can see here is all the, the factions, um, that were in the game. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty awesome. Uh, I can't wait to see how it, how it looks in its final form. And, uh, I haven't actually played it in a while either, so I should probably get back to it at some point. And, uh, apparently there'll be more, I think there's a couple more systems that are being, uh, introduced into the game and, uh, more content and all that stuff. So, we will see. We will see. We'll take a look at it when it uh, finally is released in another week or another two weeks or so. So congratulations to the devs of Helium Rain. Now, next up is a Slime Rancher. Uh, Monomi Park, I believe, is, is the name of the devs. Uh, they have announced that they're going to have a VR version of the game coming this fall, but it's not what you're thinking because <laughs> it wasn't what I'm thinking right off the bat. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a VR playground. Um, it is free DLC, uh, so you can download it for free, um, but it will be um, not as full featured as the main game. So... Usually when you hear VR, you think, oh, I'm just going to, I'm going to have to do all the same things I do in the main game. This one sounds like it's going to be just a, a very, um, I don't want to say watered down, but it's going to be a, water, it's going to be a, 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 a lesser featured version uh, of the game, um, where you will actually go and you can vac and feed and play with the slimes, um, in these little playgrounds, but they'll, but it's a separate app and it's, uh, the playgrounds will be based off of the dry reef, the moss blanket, and the ancient ruins uh, sections of the of the main map. But uh, the interactions you're basically interacting with slimes. I don't think you're. I don't know exactly what other interactions you're going to be doing. I, I, the way I read it is that it's going to be a, um, it's going to be a um, subset of the main game. Like the main game has you going around building stuff and building uh, cages for your slimes and, and all that stuff. This one seems like it's going to be more of a, a toy, a, a little play thing. Um, it's not going to have all that depth, not really going to have any story or anything like that. It's just going to be kind of a kind of a thing, a little, flashy little thing for, for the VR headsets. Um, so you can see what your slimes would look like up close and personal if you really really wanted to <laughs> really wanted to see what a slime looked like up, up close and personal here you go this is this will be your opportunity once that once that uh, vr version version comes out in, later this fall i don't think they have an exact date yet but uh we'll keep an eye on it as as we do as we do so that is our that is the the items on our gamer radar 
Radio coffee, Captain. Some guy named Graham and Ham Ham. Put it on the overhead. Ah, uh, just a minute, sir. Ah! Go ahead, sir. Ah. All right, we're into we're into the patches now, friends. And first up, Heat Signature has announced that they are celebrating a space birthday uh, that is coming up on September the 27th. There'll be one year since uh, Heat uh, Signature has been released. And they're announcing every day, they're announcing uh, what this birthday update patch is going to have. It's going to be a, 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 mega, a mega patch with over 20 new features. So, uh, the ones that they've announced thus far are, uh, new character traits. So you're, uh, whenever you start a new character, which you start a new character often, it is roguelike. So you, you die often, uh, you can now have a chance to get, to have a character with positive and negative traits. So for instance, you can have a character that will only survive 10 minutes and, you know, 10 minutes to live and you have to. Do as much as you can. Do as much damage as you can in 10 minutes. Um, you'll have characters that are weak. You'll have characters that are um, have buffs uh, to their abilities uh, based on what you're using. So it kind of gives it gives it a different flavor of how to use your characters. Instead of having just a plain plain Jane character that just starts off with a different inventory, you've now got a character that has different traits that you have to deal with. Some of them have vows. Um, some have vowed never to harm, some have vowed never to kill, some have vowed never to be seen. Although if you break a vow, it doesn't stop your game. It's just another interesting little challenge on top of things. Like, can you, can you stick to your vows and, uh, still complete all the missions in the game? It's a very neat concept. Um, uh, they, they've taken the difficulty that was there and they've kind of made it, they've changed it enough to make it, uh, even more interesting in, in how you can, uh, tweak the difficulty for yourself and also you can re-roll uh each character that comes in so if you if you get like a character that has traits that you just don't, don't really like you just hit f again and it re-rolls that character for and you can still have a chance to get a character with no traits and still have a chance to get a character with just good traits it's really uh it's really up to the up to the rng gods at that point there's new hazards being introduced um, all the ships, I believe, now have telepads, so you can uh, either use the telepad yourself to beam out of the ship or, uh, or whatnot. Beam, uh, you know, if you're doing a rescue mission, you can beam the, the survivor off the ship and all that stuff, so you can use it to your own advantage. But also the enemy, uh, more importantly, can use it to their advantage. Um, the AI can call for reinforcements if you alert them. Uh, they can flee if, if alarmed. So, uh, if you're on a mission where you have to kill a particular, uh, NPC and you alert them, they will probably run to the nearest teleporter and try to escape. So you have to, you have to manage that. Ships also have an autopilot option now. You can, you may encounter a ship that has an autopilot. Um, what that means is a lot of times you will, especially with the harder missions, you'll get a ship that is heading back to base within say five minutes or whatever. And so you have five minutes to complete all the objectives successfully before you're captured because the ship will be heading back to base. Um, sometimes that's only triggered when it's the ship's on alert. Sometimes the ship is on alert immediately and is heading back to base. Um, what this autopilot does is now the way you would in a normal game, you would get around that is you'd find the pilot and kill them and then bang, you don't have to worry about the timer anymore. That was always like, it was always like a race to get to the pilot fast and kill them. So then you don't have to worry about, uh, a timer that's ticking down to when you're going to end up at a base. Well, now you might encounter ships that have autopilot, which means they are going to get back to base within whatever timer has been set. And, uh, there is nothing you can do to stop it. So you just have to, you have exactly that amount of time to get done, get in there, get your, get your stuff and get out. Um, otherwise, uh, it's, it's not going to work out well for you. So that's also an, an interesting, uh, interesting little addition there. There's, uh, jammer gates now. Um, the NPCs can, and, and NPC ships can have jammer gates that will actually stop 
and prevent some of your equipment from you from working. So if you have a shield or you have a, a, a slipstream or whatever, uh, which is like a little teleport guy, um, those may not work. Uh, if there's a jamming, if there's a jammer on the ship, so it gives you another extra la added layer of, uh, of difficulty of unknownness as you're going in. Also adding to that unknownness is the guards can occasionally have a random uh, inventory. Now, the, to explain this, the, the main game, uh, it'll tell you before you start a mission what kind of guards you're going to encounter, and you can roll over them and you can see what equipment those guards have, whether they have <clears throat> rifles or they have, um, they have armor that prevents them from being meleeed, uh, that kind of stuff. Well, now you'll still have that, but every so often you'll encounter a guard who has bucked the trend and is not the same as his, as <laughs> one of these things is not the same as the other. And he uh, maybe have a different kit than all of his other buddies. And so there's no extra added randomness there that you have to deal with. And so you have to be a little bit more balanced in what inventory you take with you. And speaking of inventory, some missions will have an inventory lock. Right now you have eight, I believe, uh, inventory slots. So you can fill them up with whatever you want. Any devices you want, any guns you want. You can carry eight guns. You can carry two guns and, and six devices, whatever. Whatever floats your boat. Uh, now it'll be, uh, if you you know run a mission that has an inventory lock on it, you will only have two inventory slots to use so you have to be very very picky as to what you bring with you you can still gain all the uh, rewards of the mission um it's just that uh, you know those those rewards will automatically be teleported back to your stash whenever you grab them because you can't you, know, you only have two inventory slots so another interesting uh an interesting twist to the normal to the normal game and then there's a Whole new glory missions and uh, and clients that are being uh, that have glory missions that are being introduced in the game. Basically, glory missions are challenge modes. Um, there's five tiers, and uh, you, you have to encounter. You have to close. You have to get past the first tier to get to the second tier, to the third tier, so on and so forth. And instead, rather than getting money for the for running those missions, you gain glory, which is basically just a, a score you're going on a score attack there is a leaderboard so you can see how you face up against uh, other players uh, your friends and whatnot on steam uh, and uh, if you do particularly well then your character in-game character will be immortalized um, in game uh, for how well they they've done in in the glory in the glory missions so uh, there you have it. Uh, there's going to be plenty more. That's only a handful of the 20 new features that they have planned, but they haven't announced yet. So you'll want to keep an eye on the Heat Signature forums uh, on Steam to see what is coming up next for the game. But it sounds, even just right away, it sounds fantastic as far as changing up the uh, difficulty of the game and giving you different challenges to deal with and all those things. So there is that. Now, next on our patches lists. Oh, I didn't even have heat signature <laughs> activated there. That is that is my problem. Sorry about that. Next on our patches list is Crosscode. Crosscode has just been released this week, but they've already had a critical patch that you should probably take a look at. Uh, it fixes uh, mostly stability stuff and a temporary downgrade of the game's engine um, because it was caught, which may cause some slowness to people who um, were not having problems in the first place. But a lot of people were having the game crash on them uh, pretty frequently, especially during boss battles and whatnot. Uh, so the devs have temporarily downgraded their engine um, to try and help with that, with the crashing. But it's uh, because of that, you, you may end up with some performance issues that you didn't have before uh, and whatnot. So just to bear that in mind, if you were having problems playing the game, you might want to get the latest update and then try again and see if it has fixed some of your problems uh, and, uh, and whatnot. But uh, so far, so good in on, on those things. They are still working on some more patches. Um, and uh, just keep a look on, keep an eye on the community discussions there because they have uh, some good uh, 
tips on how to deal with uh, some of the crashes that were happening and um, and whatnot. So onwards and upwards here. Let's get on to medieval engineers and space engineers. If I can get the thing rolling here, there it is. <laughs> the footage, so much footage, all all packed in way here. Uh, Space Engineers and Medieval Engineers players um, have been receiving what turns out to be incorrect messages, error messages, about out-of-date NVIDIA drivers. Um, this is from the developers. Uh, NVIDIA recently released a new major graphics driver version 411.63. The change of this major version number is causing notifications in Space Engineers and Medieval Engineers about out-of-date drivers. This notification is incorrect and can be safely ignored. We will patch the games soon to correct this problem. So if you've been seeing that in game and <clears throat> have been uh, uh, concerned that your your game is uh, is borked, fear not. You have the latest drivers. Uh, it's just uh, an incorrect uh, discovery of that version number uh, by the game. Uh, so uh, just bear that in mind if you're still if you're playing uh, Space Engineers or Medieval Engineers next up on the list for players of uh, players uh, have had two new patches uh, in as many days honestly um, 2.3.59 which has tweaked some bribe and tribute values um, and achievements and unlocks recognized custom difficulty now there's there's a, a custom difficulty in the game um, and uh, based on what settings you've you've chosen on that you can now qualify for the achievements that you would normally get if you were doing hard or medium or difficulty medium difficulty or whatever um, so they they fixed that the current landing zone is now being remembered between different loads of a, of a saved game um, there is a bug, a story bug, preventing Arbiter from accepting story quests once the Coalition Arrow moves ahead. That has been fixed. And, uh, you're less likely to draw Learn Contact card during a blockade orbital operations. Um, and a few other things here along with that, along with the blockades and whatnot, a few other, a few other fixes there. Um, improved story officer Elsa's uh, attributes for future hires uh, to improve combat and viability and uh, improved type label on talents that fire at ports such as generous service and port maintenance versus landing which help land the ship safely uh, and uh, do, 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 that's about that uh, the starting and ending event lists for feign duel or being flipped and then 2.3.60, fix some crashes in the new game and template management. Um, delete function for templates has been fixed. The um, Some rule changes have been, uh, rules have been changed uh, regarding the merchant and smuggler ship combat AI. Uh, merchants now prefer bribes and offer a retreat option. Uh, smugglers no longer accept surrender but offer retreat. And no matter the player's reputation, merchants and smugglers no longer force you into combat so lots of changes it's good to see a game continually be improved upon and uh and supported as it's as it's launched and whatnot and if anything else the tracy brothers have been uh keeping up the up the pace the the, the bug fixes have been coming fast and furious and the updates and whatnot so uh very nice indeed to all those and kudos along the way so if you, if you play Star Traders Frontiers, um, you have a lot to be happy about, I hope. So, uh, there is there is that. You just kept talking in one long, incredibly unbroken sentence, moving from topic to topic so that no one had a chance to interrupt. It was really quite hypnotic. Ah, uh, thank you. Thank you, Picard. First up on the list is Shadows Awakening. It's, at some point here, I'll get I'll get good at actually transitioning between <laughs> between videos without without uh, without fail. There, Shadows Awakening is a game I played earlier this week, and I enjoyed the heck out of it. Even I only managed to play about an hour of it, but even that, I enjoyed a lot. It's a as you can see, a top down ARPG game. Uh, very Diablo style, so you have to, you know, constantly click to 
to uh, on enemies to attack and whatnot. Um, but it kind of flips it on its head a little bit. It's got all the RPG mechanics and all that stuff that you expect, but also it's got two realms that you inhabit. You've got a shadow realm and a human, a mortal realm. Uh, in the mortal realm, you do what you would normally do. You go kill lots of enemies and and uh, collect bows and equipment and look in uh, all the sarcophagi and all that stuff. And then in the shadow realm, you uh, still fight a lot of shadows and, and spirits and all that stuff. And there's different uh, power-ups that you can get over there, bring it back into the into the mortal realm. But uh, you don't have all the interaction with uh, a lot of the uh, you know sarcophagi and 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 uh, pots and all that stuff. But instead, you've got uh, the ability to traverse um, gaps in the map uh, and get to other places that you couldn't get to in the mortal realm. Um, like for instance, you can see this gap here that I'm walking up to and it's actually explaining the parallel realms here where you switch back to your demon that inhabits you and uh, they uh, become your means to get across those gaps. What I really enjoyed about the game though um, is that it does take this, it takes the party mechanic of an RPG you would normally expect and it makes it uh, rather interesting because you are... Basically, you are a demon that's inhabiting the souls of these long departed people or even living people. And when you bring people into your party, you're basically doing the same thing. You're, you're inhabiting these dead people and bring them back to life. And they are basically it's it's uh, they call it a puppet system. They are your puppets. You are manipulating them. And then you switch between which one you want for the uh, task at hand. So some of them, you know, you might have an archer for one thing, you might have a, a magic user for something else and, you know, ranger versus magic user. And so you swap between them as you need them. And it's a, it's a rather interesting way of kind of tying it all together and making it interesting. Uh, you can see here on the party screen, a lot of the people that I haven't unlocked yet, uh, you actually unlock them by running quests. So, uh, you could end up, you know, if you don't do some side quest, you might end up missing out on a few people that you can unlock uh, along the way. And some of them you just can't unlock because you've chosen, because of, of the people, the party that you've chosen um, thus far. So, uh, you know, it encourages another playthrough of the game if you, if you want and so on and so forth. So, uh, really cool. Really cool. Really nice. Uh, the artwork's good. The music was good. The sound was good. The voice acting was fantastic honestly um for i was not expecting voice acting as good for a little indie game as it did but it was it was a uh, rather nice rather nice thing indeed and i i hope to play some more of it eventually in, in a little bit of a let's play form so we'll see uh, what the what the fates have in store for us going forward next up on our list is a recore definitive edition this was a game that um, was released on consoles I believe I believe the Xbox console is an Xbox exclusive I, I think um, and um, I don't remember hearing too much about it um, it's a sci-fi um, action RPG well sci-fi action game I, I it's not that much as far as RPG mechanics in it but it's, it's a sci-fi action game and um, it's uh it's interesting I, I like the I like the concept of uh, going through and uh, killing all these things and killing all these fools and trying to steal their cores and then use those cores for upgrades to your party members like like this robot dog here um, so I, I like the concept of it um, and I, it's got a little bit of an open world and all that stuff so everything works well from what I can see it's just uh, it was kind of overlooked um, the combat is a little bit underwhelming um, there's it heavily relies on this lock on mechanic and stuff and it, re it also relies on um, on different colors if you have a, a weapon that shoots red then you you do more damage to red enemies versus white versus blue so on and so forth so um, it can get overwhelming at times uh, especially because you will get attacked by multiple things at once usually um, but otherwise it was it was a lot of fun uh, it, it was not, I guess, <coughs> excuse 
excuse me, I guess the real the real uh, problem with it was is that Horizon Zero Dawn exists, and I think that might have stolen all the thunder that this game might have otherwise had, um, because it does it better uh, than this game. Uh, but that's not to say this game's bad, it's just, uh, it's different, and uh, I could see, I, I was enjoying my time in it, and I can see enjoying a lot more time with it, so it's just one of those things where um, you kind of have to temper your... Um, if you've played Horizon Zero Dawn, then you really have to temper your expectations of the game. If you do that, then I think it can be a very fun romp. If you're if you're expecting a heavily controllable character that's kind of a lot leaping and dodging and and jumping on the backs of of the mechs and stuff, you're not going to get that here. But if you're you know if if you're looking for a nice little um, stint where you can run around and uh, shoot things shoot robots in the face then uh, this might work out for you now especially on pc with the uh, upgraded uh, graphics edition here and and whatnot okay and then next up was cross code if i can get that to show up here cross code refuses to show up here <laughs> for whatever reason it's refusing to show up let's see if i can get it to there we go. Cross code. <laughs> uh, I try, friends. I try really hard. Um, this is a almost like a. It feels like an SNES game, sort of like a, a retro styled, um, like sixteen bit um, ARPG. I am, uh, and it, it's 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 good. It it does it does a lot of things good. It's I'm kind of amazed at exactly how much is in this game because I, I was not expecting like I, I was very I found myself very overwhelmed by just the amount of stuff like there's you know you got this this distance ball that you do you've got puzzles um, you've got attacks up you know melee attacks you can do there's a combat system that actually rewards you for staying in combat as long as possible. So if you if you run around, if you're running through an area and you you know you run out of enemies, if you run to the next area real quickly and find more enemies, you'll get bonus rewards for as long you know as long as you can stay in combat. And you, you heal up in between combats automatically. But uh, if you if you stay in combat mode as long as possible, uh, you don't heal, but you uh, can. Uh, gather some more some more loot and whatnot some extra extra loot and and experience and, and and all that stuff and the premise of the game is that you are um it's a single player game but you're playing in this sort of virtual mmo world where people actually inhabit it the game um the game world itself you know they're, they're the avatars are actual people who are you know wired in or jacked into the game and you come in with a bunch of amnesia and you're trying to figure out who you are and, and what you're doing and, and, and what's going on here. So um, uh, that's the story of it. Um, the gameplay, like I said, it, it's it's pretty good. It's very action-y. Um, there's a lot of... Uh, um, there's a lot of... There's a lot of places to visit though thus far. There's a lot of puzzles. I, I found I found this first part to be kind of exhausting with the number number of puzzles. Not that I not that I mind puzzles, but it was just kind of it was really like hitting home that there's lots and lots of puzzles to go through. Um, and then I kind of got into the combat, and the combat was is okay so far. You know, the requests to do and and all that stuff, but. Uh, I didn't get far enough into that to really understand everything that's happening. And honestly, there's a lot of stuff going on under the covers in this game. Like the menu, like you're, you're unlocking parts of the menu. There's all kinds of different, um, uh, just a lot of stuff going on. I just felt, I felt very overwhelmed. And it's one of those things where you just kind of have to sit back and, uh, and experience it, I think, without any pressure and just kind of figure out, you know, tool around in it for a couple hours to figure out what's actually going on and, and what you're supposed to be doing and all that stuff. So a cool, cool, co cool game. Um, it just, uh, it requires a lot of, uh, a lot of investment to kind of figure out exactly what you're doing and what, and what's your, what's going on and, and how to deal with it. 
So that is cross code, friends. And next up is Breath Edge. It's a space survival uh, sim, sandbox sim, um, with some comedy thrown in. The aesthetic of this game is fantastic. The music is annoying. The jokes aren't really that great. Um, the humor in it is just, it's not, it could be done better. Let's put it that way. Um, it's, it's, it's a little bit, it, it goes a little bit too far into the, we're going to do this for humor's sake and not into the, and, and then have a bunch of mechanics, gameplay mechanics that really aren't that great. Um, the, um, for instance, trying to, trying to, uh, move out of your capsule and go and explore your oxygen goes through you go through oxygen like super fast it's very annoying um it's still early access i didn't really enjoy it that much i love the aesthetic uh, i absolutely love the aesthetic i just wish that it was not bogged down. i feel like it's bogged down by comedy that is not really comedy um and you know, this these gameplay mechanics that really aren't great. Like um, you have a a narrator that's constantly run, uh, sa saying things at super speed. You've got um, the oxygen is a big big problem. Like I want to go out and I want to explore and I want to do things, but it's like you get like 15 seconds of oxygen before you have to come back to this and gather more oxygen, and it's just it just made everything as annoying as it possibly could. Um, trying to find resources when you don't have enough time to, to find resources is, is a problem. It, it's just, they have a lot of tweaking that they do before I could ever find this game interesting or funny. Honestly, I am intrigued by the, the, the setting. I'm intrigued by the, the, the aesthetics. I'm not really, in, and somewhat by the setting, but I'm not really in, on board with anything else uh, they've done yet. And that's unfortunate, but it's, you know, it's still early. So let's give them the benefit of the doubt and see how that, how that rolls out. It was definitely the weaker one of the games this week um, that I played. And then we have Spidey Man, Spidey Man. I would have put a video up on the YouTubes about Spidey Man, except the YouTubes don't like Spidey Man. They, uh, they blocked it worldwide because yeah, that's a thing. Um, so I have been live streaming the heck out of this thing. Uh, you can see I'm actually about halfway through in this in this footage here, and uh, I'm enjoying it a lot. It, it's very very enjoyable. I will be you can see I'm about 45 percent at this point. I I, I about 50 percent now. I've been doing a bunch off camera to try to like some of the. Some of the more mundane tasks off camera. There's a lot of tasks to do in the city, but swinging around the city, it feels good for the most part. Uh, there are some janky parts where you kind of get, you get super sticky and you stick to walls a little bit too much sometimes um, and uh, things like that. But there are stealth uh, mechanics in the game that work really well. The story is actually very nicely done. Like it's not very often you have a superhero story where they're okay with you playing as a, you know, a secondary character for a little bit. Uh, there's a couple missions where you'll play as uh, Mary Jane. Um, just small, small little missions are just little story story interludes, but they 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 work out well. Um, and you know she's obviously not, you know, you're not fighting people as as Mary Jane. You're just kind of sneaking around and doing things. But it's it. It, it works really well. It, it, everything kind of just fits fits very nicely in the game. The only um, complaint I'd have about the mechanics is that you have a lot of, you have gadgets, you have, um, you have suit uh, abilities and whatnot. Uh, wearing different suits gives you different abilities. And honestly, there's only like four abilities in the game that are actually worth any time. Like most of the abilities are not general purpose they're all very very specific they're like very specific uh instances where you would where that would be useful and if you there's not that many general purpose ones there's only about 
three or four general purpose ones that he could use for pretty much anything, like having ballistic armor. Like I have ballistic armor on that gives me, allows me to get shot a few more times without having too much damage and an XP booster and things like that. Like those are the general purpose ones that you just kind of use for everything. And I found myself just using them for the entire game and not swapping them out for anything else because all the other stuff is just kind of, it's very specific to just certain certain instances and really honestly, you can do without them. So I, I, I would say that's a bit of a, a, uh, a negative uh, for the game is that, I mean, kind of where you, you just kind of stick to one or two, one or two things and then that's it. There's no real reason to do anything else. Um, and the other thing, uh, obviously the stickiness to walls can sometimes be a problem, uh, especially when you're trying to go fast. But the, um, the only other problem I could kind of, uh, point out here is the, uh, the camera will sometimes not be be less than that's less than helpful <laughs> let's put it that way you can't really for any kind of brawler like this open world brawler like this um arkham style you you can't really though it has a lock-on mechanic you can't really use that while you're in a brawl right because there's just too many guys fighting you at once and you can't really lock on to one and just focus on one it's it's not it doesn't work out well that way um usually anyway this game is no different there are times when you're just i i will say that there are times when you you get hit by a, a big dude and then uh you don't get any like invulnerability frames like you would think hey i got hit now i can kind of roll out from this guy but no you're you're kind of stun locked and then it'll hit you about six more times and it's like well that's not even ridiculously fair right you're like trying to you're trying to get out of the way, but you can't. You can't do anything, and you're kind of hung up on, on the environment, or you're hung up on, not being able to, um, you know, dodge roll or anything like that because you're you're stun locked. Those kinds of things. So there is sometimes when it's just kind of unfair, but for the most part, for the most part, if you if you get wrecked, um, you kind of feel like you know what what you did wrong and how you, and how to fix it and how to do better. Uh, and that's always a, a good thing, I think. So, uh, so far so good on that. I'm enjoying it tremendously. And I would, I would highly recommend anybody, uh, if you own a PS4, uh, go, go pick up yourself a copy of Spider-Man, Marvel Spider-Man, because it is quite worth it in my humble opinion. All right, friends. Well, that will that will do it for this episode of Dot Plan for the week of, uh, or the the week ending September twenty second, uh, the week beginning September twenty third of twenty eighteen. Um, this is uh, the first episode of this, and it's as you can see, uh, <laughs> about as janky as janky can be. But I'm trying to do, try to do something different than what I used to do um, with uh, Cube Ramblings. I'm trying to actually show in context videos. I'm trying to re lower and reduce the number of things that I actually cover. Uh, I do have, believe it or not, an outline that I'm following. Um, even though I'm, I haven't completely written up all of the uh, the words that I'm I'm using because I, I feel like that loses a little bit of something. I I do have a general idea of what I want to say, uh, which is par for the course sometimes. And um, I am doing a lot of this live. I'm doing it live, not live on the internet, but live to tape. Uh, I have basically OBS here and I am pressing buttons, sometimes in the right order, <laughs> sometimes not, and making it all come together that way to try to reduce the amount of editing I have to do. And later on, I will have to add uh, some, some audio and some music and whatnot because there's none of that right now. But uh, I uh, I didn't want to do that for the first for the first episode here. Uh, I didn't want to do it live for the first episode here because there was already a lot of things to press and not press and all that stuff. Uh, um, so hopefully this has worked out well. I wasn't intending on this being over an hour, but it is. <laughs> so be it. Uh, I was hoping it would be a lot shorter than that, but I I've got the the different segments. Um, what I've played. 
uh, the patch segment, the, uh, the gaming radar, and starting out with the news. So hopefully that has all uh, worked out well for you guys. If it has, just, uh, you know, feel free to give me a little love <laughs> in the old in the old upvote finger um, uh, and or the, the typing fingers. And, uh, and uh, I will continue to try to improve and hopefully continue to do this uh, on a weekly basis. We'll see. Uh, I'm trying. <laughs> I can't. I can't guarantee it. This one, this first episode took uh, all of Saturday, and um, now I'm more than halfway through Sunday. Um, but that was mostly because I didn't have any graphics or anything set up yet. So, and I didn't know how I was going to do things. So, <laughs> how I was going, how I was going to abuse live split to get the uh, the segments down the bottom and all that stuff. So uh, there you go, friends. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. And I hope to, uh, or, or listening on SoundCloud. I will be putting this up on SoundCloud. And uh, hopefully uh, you guys will uh, join me again next week.